Okay, so there's one more state variable we need to keep track of. This is an app state variable. We are now gonna create a page state variable because it's only gonna be really applicable to the actual page that we are on. So let's move over then to the widget tree here. Let's move over here then to state management. Let's add a field. And this one, we're just gonna call this one product index like that and it's going to be of type integer it's not going to be nullable it's always going to have a value and we're going to set the first one to be zero now i'll show you how all this works in just a moment but the whole idea of this particular variable is that it's going to be used with inside our actual loop so we're going to keep track of our position as we loop through all the super base kind of rows that we got coming back we're going to keep incrementing this product index uh, kind of value and then we're going to do a conditional check and that conditional check is going to make a decision on whether we actually break out of that loop at that particular point we go back and we then find the next super base record and then keep inserting them into our sql light database but again that will all come clear in very very, very in, in a very short while when we start adding all of the actions in but for now we're just going to hit confirm on that one and that's that page state variable all created now here is then the next kind of concept that we're going to cover now um, depending on how long you have been using flutterflow for you would have probably got used to creating actions on buttons and all that kind of stuff. But what we're going to do in this particular uh, kind of example is we're going to create what's called an action block. We're going to create a reusable set of actions that we can call from more than one location on our actual page. So the key thing here is with action uh, with action blocks is you can have them at page level or you can have them at app level. So what's the difference? Well, uh, action blocks that run on the page are only going to be available to be kind of uh, sort of called on the actual page from multiple locations. When you create an app state action block, this is available to the entire a part of your application so from many pages you can call out to an action to an action block which is set as app state action block and you'll see that if i just move over here you can see we've got these app level and we've got these page level scopes for our action blocks now we're going to create a page level one because we only want this to be reusable piece of functionality on this particular page um, so just bear that in mind um, there is some subtle differences between the two but pretty well much they play out the, in this exactly the same way so let's focus then on our page level action block so just select that and i'm going to say create action block and i'm going to call this action block called a refresh products like that there we go so hit create now, here we are now in the Action Flow Editor, which should be super familiar to you. And now, of course, we can just carry on creating these particular actions. So the first one that we're going to want to create is we're going to want to make a call out to our back end. We're going to make a call out now to Superbase. And we're going to want to make a call into the table that we're tracking that kind of that, that latest kind of timestamp that we created earlier. So let's hit the, uh, the Add Action here. Let's go to then back end, type in back end like that. And you can see here we've got this Superbase and we're going to do the query of the row so just select that we're going to select the table and it's going to be the products change tracker like that and we're going to need to give this a variable name so I'm going to give this one a name of last change result like that. So this is really just going to kind of populate the value from this particular row into this particular variable. We're going to use that very, very shortly. So once that is all set up, that is good. Now, this is where we now need to make a now a conditional check. So let's hit the add and we're going to go add to conditional. So we're going to go into conditions here and we're going to do a single condition. Now, the first value if I now go here, is going to be then the action output. Okay, so this is this last change result here. So just select that. We're going to select this here, and we're going to say the uh, the item it index. Select this, and we're going to say it's the first record that we've got coming back, which is there's only going to be one in that particular table. Just hit confirm. In fact, no, we don't. We need to say get row field like that. Let's say get row field. And then this is where we're now going to put, pick up the last underscore change. This is going to be that timestamp that we've got this again automatically updated in our super base database as we make changes to our products table. Just hit confirm like that. Now, this is where we now need to set our, our condition here. So our condition is going to be a greater than, and then our second value we're going to select here, we're going to go on here, and this is where we're going to go to our app state variable, the one that we just created. And we're going to say products are change date and time, and just hit confirm. So if the last change date, 
okay, which will happen, of course, if we update our products, is greater than the date that we're currently persisting with inside our application, which remember at first run, we kind of set this to like the 2018 date. So we know that our data in our database is going to be uh, sort of more, uh, it's going to be a greater time than the, the date that we're tracking in that app state variable. So this will ultimately mean that we'll get that kind of refresh um, uh, come down of our data at this particular stage. But we're going to kind of do something a little bit more in the page load uh, very shortly about that. But just uh, we need to, we just need to kind of set that here and then oh, just hit confirm. And then that's our condition. So, of course, if this is then true, this is where we kind of need to then put all of the meat on the bones in terms of what we're actually doing. This is where we're going to start creating the loop and all that kind of stuff. So the first thing that we need to do really then is kind of like we know if we're in this particular uh, sort of th this particular direction, we know we're going to kind of want to wipe out all of the data that we currently got in our SQLite database. So or at least in that table anyway. So if I just type in SQLite here, we're going to do an update query. Now we created these queries earlier on, so we've got delete all products and that is all we need to. That's going to simply then delete all of the products from our database table. Next up, what we're going to do is we're then going to then query our Superbase database table. And now we're going to go to query. This is where we need to bring down all of the products. So we're just going to choose products here. Um, I'm going to order. I'm going to add an order in here. I'm just going to say, well, I'm going to do the ID here to be then increased. And so we're going to go one, two, three, four like that. So that's fine. Um, so that's all set. And we just need to put then our variable in here. So I'm just going to say this is products like that. So we're going to use that very shortly in our loop. So that's all good. So we've got a variable now that's going to be persisted with kind of all of the rows that come back from our super base table. And this is where we now need to enter our actual loop. So just choose add loop like that. So we now need to put then our con a kind of our condition there. We want to kind of loop around all of our records that come back from our, our the total number of rows that come back from Superbase. And we're going to want to then insert these one by one into our SQLite database. So let's put this condition in here. So of course, once this condition is met, of course, this loop will then break. So let's go up to conditions here. Let's go to single condition. So what we're going to say here, we're going to get our product index. So we go to page state here. We've got our product index here and just hit confirm. And we're going to say it all the time that it's less than. And I'll go in here into our second value here. We're going to select this. We're going to go to our action output. So this is our products. This is our list of products that come back from Superbase here. And I'm just going to choose the number of items there like that. Hit confirm. So all the time that we're going around and we're kind of going one by one um, and it's going to be less than the number of items. We know this loop is going to continue like that. So just hit confirm. Now I'll just move that up here like that. So this is the point that we're now going to want to now insert our database row into SQLite. So in fact, it's not super base, it's SQLite. And we're going to want to do an update query here. And we're going to go to our queries here. We're going to insert local product. This is what we created earlier. And here, of course, are our variables. So just hit plus. Now, our variable that we need to set is now going to be an ID. So then how do we kind of then uh, set the ID of our uh, SQLite row based on the value that's coming out of Superbase? Well, we need to kind of get into that row that we've got from our products. So what we're going to do is just select this here. We are going to go to our action outputs like that. We're going to go to products like that. Now available options. We're going to say item at index. Now we're going to say it's going to be a specific index and the index is going to be that kind of that page state variable that we kind of created earlier. So we just go to page state and we're going to product index. So if this is the first time this loop is run, this is going to be zero. So it's going to get the first one from our, our list of products that we got come back. It never starts at one. It's always going to be zero. So we've got that. And then we're going to get the field and we're going to choose ID here. So we're matching everything up here and just hit confirm like that. Now, of course, the bad news is um, we're now going to have to go through and create all of these variables. But it does make it a little bit more convenient in Flutterflow that we can actually select this. And we can copy this particular variable, which means we've only then got to change one thing. So I'm going to show you what I'm going to do in one, and then I'll go around it and do the rest for everything else. So just choose variable here. And I'm just going to go down to the variable now. We're going to choose name here, go to select the little selector, and then hit the paste option. Just going to scroll down here. Instead of it being ID, I'm going to select the name. And I'm going to do that now for the rest of the remaining columns. And um, then hopefully I'll get all of those completed. I'll come right back and I'll show you all of that done. 
Okay, so just painfully gone through and set all of that up. I know we're not using all of these variables inside our application, but it's kind of good to kind of fill a, a complete data set up here. So you get to kind of get a, a familiarity on how you can do that in your own application. So that's all done now, all set up. Now there was one more thing that we need to do in our loop and we now need to increment this product index because of course we're gonna to wanna to keep looping around as, as I said before, until we've got all of our kind of rows set. So let's just add the action here. Let's just type in state here and we're gonna update the page state here select the field here it's going to be product index and all we're simply going to want to do here is increment this by one and that is simply it and of course we know it's going to loop all the way around and then we're going to break out of our loop once everything matches up and we have all of our rows in our sqlite database table and then of course we can now carry on with some just a couple more actions here so what we now want to do is add an action here, which is going to set the uh, the actual last uh, the actual the actual date stamp that we're keeping track of in the app state variable. Uh, we need to set that to be the last date that's come back from the database table. So let's just update then the app state here. Let's set the fields. It's going to be the product change date and time. We're just going to set the value, and the value to set is going to come from our action output. This is from the last change result database table. There. Let's just go in there. Let's Let's get the item index it's going to be the first let's select that and it's going to be the last changed so we're always going to be tracking that date and time that's um that was last uh, come back from our database table so let's just hit confirm there like that that is all set and then finally all we then need to do is simply reset our page state variable that we've got here ready for the next uh, the next iteration here just in case the user sort of hits refresh or anything like that update the page state set the field Go to product index here. Let's just now reset that value. And as we set a default value, it's just gonna set it back to zero again. And of course it means this process can run again and again and again. That is as simple as it comes. Or oh, just close that a little bit too there. I think that is pretty well much it here. I think we're set. Yeah, that's it. So I think there's nothing else missing there. So we now have got this reusable kind of uh, action, uh, set of actions that we can use called refresh products. We can now call this in two different places. So let's now set up the action now that's going to kind of uh, invoke this particular uh, sort of uh, page action block. So let's just close this down here. Let's go to our button. Let's move up here. Let's just choose the open here and it's gonna be on tap event. Let's add the action. And what we're gonna do is you can see here, we've got this page action block available. Just choose refresh products. We don't need to change anything here. Once that's done, that's gonna call out to that. It's gonna do its magic, it's gonna do its thing. The only thing we are probably gonna to want to do here is just update the, the state here, just to make sure that we kind of see the latest kind of uh, update of all of the database tables. You don't include this. You you may find that you might not get that uh, sort of that that page state refresh here that will mean that you won't see the kind of the updated results come back from the database so let's just choose update page state here uh, and that is uh, should be all that we need to do let's just uh, close in fact what I yeah I think we'll keep it as a page state um, I've got a feeling that it might actually need to be app state actually let's just refresh this just do update app state here and that is all that we need to do just hit close and we should be good. So I think if we were to kind of fire this up now, um, I'm kind of hoping that we would kind of see all of the data come back from our uh, from our database. And we can certainly give that a go. So maybe, uh, maybe I think I'm not missing anything here. Maybe in the next bit, let's quickly give this a test and let's see if we hit any problems. If we have, then we can come back and we can kind of uh, correct those. Yeah.